What is it about a plain white water bottle that has the power to put the whole internet in a chokehold? This large, plain, white water bottle, the Stanley Cup, has taken TikTok and my high school community by storm. It is the new Hydro Flask, which was the new Swell Bottle, which was the new Contigo Bottle, and it seems as though everyone has one. Ironically, I carry a water bottle that looks very similar to the Stanley Cup, but is about three years old and one third of the price. I've been using this water bottle for years and bringing it to school daily. However, nobody commented on it until the Stanley Cup became popular in the TikTok algorithm. One of my friends came up to me and said something similar to, oh, are you a Stanley girl now too? I received more comments about my water bottle in the following week than I did during all those previous years combined. One girl said to me, I love your cup. After thanking her, I could not help but wonder, what is it about a trending item that makes people so enthralled with that item? Society's economic and class obsession is fueling masses of people to participate in trends, even if they do not realize their motivation behind wanting these items. According to CBS News, 86% of young adults want to become social media influencers. But how does this affect the trends from these social media platforms? Well, now, more than ever, teenagers are failing to investigate what speaks to them as individuals and succumbing to whatever material items will make them look like the celebrities they look up to. Teenagers become obsessed with these trends. Their desire to have what the people they see online have is destructive to their individualism and sense of self. Instead of trying to please a potential audience and blend in with what is considered cool, young adults should experiment with different ways to express themselves in how they dress and learn what speaks to them. Individuals who subscribe to a given trend by buying the item feel a sense of belonging and inclusion in that specific community. Older generations, such as my mother's Gen X, wish to obtain the youthful teen look, so they copy our fashion trends even when our trends go against their rules of fashion. Fashion norms that are popular today, such as white sneakers with a dress, would have never been socially acceptable when my mother was younger. Still, she and her friends subscribe to the trends because they want to belong to the group that is leading social media and pop culture, teenagers. Although there is no problem with changing your style, feeling as though you have to change in order to fit in strips people of their individualism. Everyone's backgrounds and tastes differ, so why should one look be celebrated instead of the limitless possibilities of fashion diversity? The nature of social media compels users to compare themselves to whomever they are viewing online, even though the content they are viewing is edited, posed, and even photoshopped so that influencers look nearly perfect, a standard nobody can achieve. Viewing the perfect bodies, perfect makeup, and perfect lives of influencers all day can lead to self-comparison and insecurity, which is, encourages people to purchase the products and items that influencers use themselves, as illustrated in an article by the National Library of Medicine. Influencer brand deals work so well for the brands because once social media users feel ostensibly inferior in terms of appearance, they become targets for brands that promote products making them into the influencers they look up to. Further amplifying this insecurity and conditioning young people into thinking that if they buy the products and follow the trends of people online, they'll become more attractive and possibly even famous. Moreover, social media algorithms promote harmful behaviors which also become trends, encouraging youths to participate. For example, as the growth of the Kardashian influence spread across all social media platforms, the ideal body changed from model skinny to a Kardashian hourglass figure which became a fad. Because of the popularity of the Kardashian body, there were surges of people making money by selling teens workout and diet plans to achieve an hourglass figure in just 10 days. Additionally, there was a surge of people flying to different countries to get surgeries to possess the unrealistic bodies and facial features of the Kardashians. The trends we participate in not only just promote products such as water bottles and makeup, but also pressure individuals into altering their own physical bodies. 
Recently, the hourglass figure has gone out of style and its replacement body trend strives for the skinniest figure possible. Celebrities across the board have been accused of taking out implants or being on a certain weight loss drug called Ozempic because of the drastic weight loss and shift into a slimmer figure. In addition to promoting an unattainable body image, this drug is used to treat diabetics, and there have been massive shortages of this medicine because of healthy people using it to fit into the mold that social media has created for us. On TikTok, users see more what I eat in a day videos or trying the Victoria's Secret model diet, both promoting underfueling your body and over-exercising. But these body trends have been prevalent for decades. Marilyn Monroe, known to me the most beautiful woman in the world in the 1950s and 60s, was a size 12, according to the Marilyn collection. In today's world, we consider plus-size models as models larger than a size 8, according to Cosmopolitan magazine. If Marilyn Monroe was born in this generation, she would likely be rejected from agency after agency. Why are beauty standards and trends able to give someone the title of being beautiful or not? When will we realize that our bodies are not trends and we do not need to shapeshift based on who is popular on social media? It feels as though trends, especially when compounded by the comparative aspects of social media, work as a factory, creating the same person out of individuals. The question is, what can we do about this, and how can we inspire individualism in a world where one image is celebrated as the best? First, we can start by really debating with ourselves and further understanding why we want to purchase something before we do. We must detach ourselves from the trend and see it as a mere internet phase we do not always need to participate in. With the Stanley Cup, we need to ask ourselves, why do I want this? What am I going to gain from this product? And Will I want this product five years from now? For example, a recent trend was a product called Dior Lip Oil, which was another product that exploded on TikTok and therefore everyone was buying them. I too wanted one, but by going through these questions, I was able to see the product as a trend, not something I necessarily needed or even wanted. Within the next couple of months, the Dior lip oil was gone and replaced with a new product, creating a clutter of what was once extremely popular. The additional waste that these constantly shifting trends create is another reason we must take a step back and only purchase items that will benefit us in the long run. According to an article published by Boston University, more than 34 billion pounds of used clothing gets thrown out each year and that is just clothing. Think of all the additional unnecessary purchases you make each year and where they end up, either in a landfill or in the clutter drawers. We need to ask ourselves how much use we will get from each product we purchase before pulling the trigger and buying an item. By contemplating these questions, we can better understand what speaks to us as individuals versus what we want because we are told to want it. Additionally, we as young adults need to realize that we live in a bubble, including what we see online. Because of the algorithm of social media and the internet in general, we see more of what we search for and what we engage with, meaning that other perspectives are often hidden. Although we cannot change the nature of social media, we can be aware of this bubble and strive to see other perspectives. By learning that different cultures have different trends, and standards of beauty, we can de-emphasize the pressure to look or dress a certain way. Maybe in America, social media may pressure you to lose weight to look like a surgery and weight loss pill-filled famous celebrity, but realizing that in Africa, being heavier is celebrated as more beautiful may help you realize that one look is not more beautiful than the other by definition, and these standards of beauty are ethereal notions that people make up. They are not concrete or absolute by any means. By detaching ourselves from the trends we see online, we can dive deeper into our individual approach to beauty and form our own unique identity. If we all focused on stepping back and resisting participating in the trends we see online, maybe the open space will allow us to derive deeper meaning and how we express and present ourselves, therefore creating a more authentic version of ourselves. Thank you.